Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome to another episode. The Pentax Kmount is one of the most widely used, most common lens mounts ever made, and there were hundreds, probably thousands of cameras and lenses that used it. Today, we're going to look at four Kmount cameras and all these cameras can use the very wide array of K-mount lenses. We've got the Cosina CT1, that's an all manual camera. We've got the Pentax MV, which is an entirely auto exposure camera. We've got the Chinon CE4, which has both auto and manual exposure. And we also have the Pentax ME Super, again a manual and fully auto exposure camera. They're all fantastic photographic tools, they're all very highly specced and very nicely made machines and even the most expensive should cost you no more than £60. So without further ado then, let's take a look at our first camera for today and that's this beautiful little thing, the Pentax ME Super. There are a few better looking cameras than this one. It has that fantastic classic SLR styling and it's a real good representative of a camera of that time. It's a lovely little thing. It's really small. If we compare it to this OM2 SP that I've got here, we can see that in terms of width, well, actually, the OM2 is slightly by a millimeter or so, slightly wider, and that's a surprise in terms of height. Well, again, the Olympus is actually slightly taller by two or three millimeters, so that's a big surprise. This camera is actually smaller than an OM2, which is itself considered a very, very small camera. But this one is even smaller, making it really portable, really usable and really practical too. It feels great in the hand. It's just the right size. Well, certainly for my hands and I'm sure there's room to spare there for anyone with bigger hands. It's a very, very neat little machine and it just feels right. It's an aperture priority auto exposure camera, but it also has a manual setting. It's got, uh, yeah, so it's got a manual setting. It's also got a 125 uh, shutter speed setting. I guess that's for in case the batteries die. And there's also a B setting to uh, hold your shutter open as long as you want it to remain open if you're photographing in very low light for example. Now this camera has a metal shutter inside it which is kind of nice. Nothing wrong with a cloth shutter, I've used many many of them over many years and it's a reliable good design but there's something nice about a nicely engineered uh, metal shutter which this camera has and there it goes. So, generally a nice level of engineering on this camera. A very good level of quality. It's a very, very nice little machine. And in terms of price, this is the most expensive camera here today. These tend to go for around 50 to 60 pounds at least in the UK. That's a buy it now price. Um, that I got from eBay. I looked at quite a few on eBay and they do tend to be a little inflated so an auction will be slightly cheaper but yeah around 50 to 60 pounds for this camera which seems to me really good value. This is a lovely little machine. So next up we've got a little camera that shows a good SLR doesn't have to be expensive. This is the Cosina CT1 and this is an all manual camera. So on the top here we've got the rewind crank, we've got the shutter speed dial with speeds from one second to one thousandth and B. We've got a hot shoe in the middle here 
and on the left here we have the film speed selector which is marked in ASA uh, and the rewind crank again this camera preserves the classic camera styling it's a black body one as you can see I kind of like the look of black body cameras I think that they're pretty cool now this camera looks mechanical because it is it's a simple all mechanical manual film SLR there's a meter in the viewfinder so that you can get your light reading and adjust your aperture and your shutter speed and an all manual camera as I've said many times is probably the ideal camera to learn on because it teaches you about light it teaches you about exposure and it's a very simple clean and uncluttered experience there's nothing to get in the way between yourself and the image between the photographer and the image it's an experience that puts you in direct contact with the camera in direct contact with the light that's making the image and I'd advise anybody who's learning photography to start with a manual film SLR. It really is an excellent way to learn. In fact, in my opinion, a manual film SLR is as close to the perfect camera as it's possible to get. It's a really beautiful experience. If you haven't tried one, I recommend that you do. And this is a very good one to uh, try with to begin with as far as price goes this was a cheap camera in its day and it's still a cheap camera now these go for between 30 to 50 pounds with a 50 millimeter lens and of course any of the fantastic came out lenses will mount on this camera so a real bargain in my opinion from an old manual camera to an all automatic one this is the pentax mv and this is a beautiful little camera it shoots in aperture priority auto exposure mode only it does have an emergency one hundredth of a set of a second setting actually i think that's the flash sync yeah the flash is synced at one hundredth and that seems like a mechanical speed there it goes and it also has a B setting for longer exposures when you want to keep your shutter open as long as you want to maybe if you're photographing in very low light or doing some star photography or something like that this is a very very similar camera to the first one we looked at the ME Super in fact I think the body is identical I've looked at these two cameras carefully and I can't see any difference at all in the actual body so the body is the same and that means that the MV is a very small camera just like the uh, ME Super is as I say there are no manual settings but aperture priority is great it really frees up the photographer and if you're not too bothered about learning about exposure or if you know all about it and just want to shoot in auto anyway this is a great little camera it gives you all the freedom of a point and shoot with all the quality of an SLR and of course all the quality of these fantastic K-mount lenses this little camera is not an expensive camera and it will shoot all this fantastic glass that seems to me a pretty good little machine it's got a film speed selector dial on the left here I think you have to lift that to turn it it's got a little rewind crank in the place where they usually have rewind cranks it's got the classic camera look it looks like a classic camera walk down the street with this little kit over your shoulder and you will be one of the cool crowd if we compare it to the ME Super there are some features deleted there's no self timer for example but really who uses self timers on film cameras these days who does selfies or any shot 
requiring the use of a self-timer with one of these cameras. I certainly don't, so I don't really see that as any particular handicap. There's no exposure compensation dial, um, which the ME Super has, but that's no real hardship. You can just change the film speed selector dial to compensate your exposure if you want to. So that's no hardship either. This is a very capable, very powerful little photographic tool. It has within its depths that same metal shutter that we find on the ME Super. All in nice working order, speaking well for the quality of these little cameras. As regards cost, these cameras are not expensive. They can be found for uh, between 40 and 50 pounds, probably less if you buy on auction rather than buy it now. And for a high quality, powerful little machine that's got the classic look and accepts all these fantastic K-mount lenses, again, that is another bargain. So now we come to the fourth of our classic K-mount cameras and that's the Chinon CE4. Now this is a really nice looking camera. I do like how colour is used on these cameras actually. We've got the green and the orange typefaces going on. We've got colours, various colours used on the top deck here. We've got a splash of colour on the self timer. This is a really nice little piece of kit. It has both fully manual and aperture priority auto exposure and that makes it a really really versatile camera. This is a camera that could be used by anybody. It's a small camera, it's neat and well designed. I'm not sure it's quite as small as the Pentax cameras. Let's just have a look. Yeah, it's slightly wider than the Pentax by a couple of millimetres and it's actually slightly taller as well. There isn't much in it. The actual dimensions uh, are not that much different, but it does have the look and feel of a slightly larger camera, but it's still a very small, very manageable, very handleable piece of kit and it's certainly not as large as some other cameras that are on the market. It has a classic layout, it's very simple and easy to use. The shutter speed dial is here on the top, so you've got your manual speeds and your auto setting. Film advance, nice and smooth, good mechanism on here. Um, film speed dial over here, plus on this camera, an exposure compensation setting, which I think you have to push this little pin down to use. Yeah. And it's also got the pretty much standard feature rewind crank on the side there. Chin on were cheaper cameras, they were at the cheaper end of the market. Um, and they were sold in the UK anyway, they were sold in a shop called Dixon's and I'm sure I must have looked at many of these in Dixon's shop window. But even though this is a camera from the cheaper end of the market, it's still a fully featured powerful SLR. It does no less or hardly any less than cameras costing a great deal more. And it's good quality too, it's stood the test of time, it's still in good working order, or at least it was last night. There we are. Yes, it's still in good working order. It's also in nice condition. This one hasn't been used very much. And in fact, right now on uh, our favourite auction site, there is a pretty much a brand new one of these in box. Doesn't seem ever to have been used. Um, so there are lots of these around there's a nice metal shutter in there. And it's a very nice, very well made 
piece of kit. I think the body is plastic. Most likely it is plastic, but it's a good strong plastic. It's well formed. It's a solid little piece of kit. A very nice camera that, of course, takes all of these fantastic K-mount lenses. I really quite like this camera. It's a bit of an underdog, but it's no less a camera than, say, an Olympus OM-10 or something of that sort. As far as prices go, these cameras sell for around about 30 to 50 pounds for a good one. And the new in-box one that I mentioned that's uh, on eBay at the moment is going for a hundred pounds. And so there is an SLR that you could buy today and would still be giving good service in 20, 30 years time if you wanted to keep it that long. So these things are bargains. So there we are, four wonderful little cameras, all available cheaply for less than £60, and all of which use these fantastic K-mount lenses. On top of that, they've all got classic camera styling as well. And really, these are machines that you're going to find very, very hard to beat. These are some of the nicest, best SLRs you can buy. So that's it from me for now. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell before you go. And if you enjoy the content on this channel and you'd like to help the channel grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography. As ever, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time for some more xenography.